In this tutorial, we're going to do a brief explanation of what is referred to as HDR photography. It stands for High Dynamic Range. Now, there's a lot of different opinions as far as what makes a HDR shot. In this particular example, we are going to demonstrate uh, using what is called tone mapping as a means of combining multiple images into one to pull the highlights and the lows and the darks and the different levels of exposures out of all the different images to make one giant composite. So the software that I'm using today is called the uh, Alonio Photo Engine. There's many different applications out there. Uh, there's Photomatics. You can use Photoshop for this. Uh, this is the software that I'm using today. Uh, it's just the software of choice. So. Um, to give you a brief explanation as far as what we're going to be doing today. Um, you can see here I've loaded up a multiple sets of images um, in the browser and the software. And you can see that what I've done is we're going to use today a shot that I took of a truck out at a, a ghost town. So what we're going to do is I will show you what the image looks like in Photoshop. Now I typically shoot all of my images uh, with my Nikon D700 in uh, raw mode. Raw mode is kind of like shooting into a negative uh, as opposed to a JPEG it is, uh, you know, which is more of a finished shot. Uh, I shoot into raw. The, uh, of course, the downsides to shooting in raw is the images are very large, um, usually about 10 times the size of what a normal photograph in a JPEG will be uh, or even higher. But it does give you a lot of options as far as working in a post-production environment to be able to make uh, adjustments. So I've loaded up my base image here in, uh, again, it's in raw mode. When I load it into Photoshop, it's going to give you different options that are available, uh, such as manually adjusting our exposure levels and doing fill lights and blacks. And so you, you have a lot of manual control over how you can work with the image itself. So for right now, we're just going to use this as a demo image. And uh, I'm going to leave that as it is right there. And then we're going to come back to our HDR software. Now what you'll notice is that this here is the image sample that I was just looking at in Photoshop. And if we take a look, this is what I am using as my baseline image. Um, as far as exposure is concerned, this is the kind of the medium level of exposure that I'm looking at to create this image. So in HDR what we are doing is we are taking a series of photographs um, generally speaking we are using a tripod for this and we're using a series of photographs um, some overexposed and some underexposed as a means of combining them into one shot. So here is my baseline image of the exposure level that I'm looking at. Um, you can pull up, of course, the detailed information on how it was shot. And as you can see here, these three shots here are different levels of underexposure. So this is uh, one step underexposed, two steps, and three steps underexposed. The next series of shots are overexposed. This is one step over, two steps over, and three steps over exposed. So I have set a preset inside my camera to automatically make these adjustments uh, bracketed so that way I don't have to go back to the camera and uh, make these adjustments manually. Um, also by doing it this way it saves on any possible movement of the camera even if it's on a tripod. I also use a remote shutter release to get these different images to preserve the ability to uh, make sure that everything is nice and still so when we do the composite we don't have any blurs as a result of the images being a, a little out of adjustment. Also you notice in the software every time I make a different set of photographs for HDR use, I will uh, slate it. I'll usually put my hand up so I can take one shot so I know that there's a separation of the next series. So we are using a combination right now of seven different photographs to combine. Now it's usually preferred that you do always an odd number. This way you have one of images your baseline and then the next series of shots are overexposed and underexposed as an odd number uh, or a series of even numbers rather. So here I'm using seven. You could use three, five, nine, however many you choose. I just decided to use seven for this particular shot. So uh, the more images you use up to nine, the more play you're going to have in the uh, image once it's composited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these nine images. I'm going to highlight them. As you can see, like I just hold the shift key down and highlighted all these images and I'm going to now add them over here to our project selector. So now they're all in the queue there and I'm going to hit this button here. It says create HDR tone map project. And so now what it's going to do is this will take briefly a few minutes. It's going to go and load up all of these images and then it's going to make a combination of these images 
as one giant tone map. So as you can see, the progress is moving there. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go back to my Photoshop file over here. And again, just to uh, recap a little bit, when I'm shooting in RAW, it allows us to have a lot more creative uh, use of the image when it's in this mode. It's kind of like when you shoot directly to a negative. You have more control in the post-processing of that image as it goes through the development process um, when you create the final final product. So here we can adjust everything from vibrance to you know the key colors to all of these different things and that's all because I shot in a raw mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this image just as it is. We're gonna come back over here see how our progress is doing and we're at 28 percent. So I'm gonna pause this video briefly until the final image loads. So just to fast forward a bit for our uh, time lapse here, we are now back into our uh, Olonio software. And here we're going to see our baseline image. It's uh, pretty much a simple composite of the images that we have. It's not going to look that much different than if I go into Photoshop and look at our image here. It's probably going to look a little underexposed, but it's uh, going to be pretty close. So now we're going to start to go into what is uh, called our tone mapper and when we start to make adjustments in our tone map you're going to start to see reflections happening where you're going to get more peaks and valleys up into our histogram here for our red greens and our blues so right over here it sees TM strength that stands for tone map and so we're going to now make an adjustment on this as I start to drag this slider up you're going to start to see it pull more levels of color out of the image as we start to creep this up a little bit more so as I move this up we're going to start to have this image look less like a photograph and almost more like a painting. So we can start to play around with that and that looks pretty interesting right there. I'm able to preserve some of the blues in the sky. I'm able to uh, pull a lot of the greens and the yellows out of the color. Uh, some of the reds out of the sign over here and over here. Some of the rust colors and so forth. So that might be one place we might want to end this um, for adjusting our strength. We can always go back and play with this later. But uh, the next step we're going to do is our detail strength. Now when I make an adjustment on this slider you're going to start to see all the places where you get a lot of detail such as the colors and the rust and um, the nicks in the paint and little uh, nicks and, and uh, you know uh, little pieces around the wheelbase. Especially you're going to notice a big change in the rocks because there's so much detail in there. So this was kind of a good example to use as an HDR shot because you're going to see so much detail change. And this is going to again look less and less like a photograph and more like a painting as we make adjustments to this. So I'm going to slide this up a little bit and I want you to observe very closely what happens when I slide this up to the little details in here. So as I start to pull this up here you're going to start to see all the details in this image just pop. And again, the more I go, the more detail it's going to pull out of this image. So the higher I go, the more it's going to look less like a photograph and more like a painting. So I might bring this back down a little bit so it doesn't look quite so uh, out of touch. But we might like leave it right about there. And again, you're going to notice that there's so much detail that this is going to pull out out of this image. And again, we can always come back and make adjustments to the, to the uh, tone map strength to make adjustments. But if we want this to look kind of unique and interesting, I might bring this up a little bit more and put it right back to about where it was. So there we have it. We can also adjust our exposure settings and so forth. Uh, we can even come down into the lowered tones and adjust for brightness contrast settings here. So I have this set at 50. You can see we can make adjustments here if we want to make the image a little darker. And we can kind of manipulate that there. We can make adjustments to our contrast if we want. We want less contrast, more contrast, and so on and so forth. So little adjustments we can make there. Uh, adjustments to our white balance if we want to adjust for different types of white balance settings we can do that so we can even set this to daylight if we choose and that will help uh, make some minor adjustments there so these are all different types of things that we can do uh, simply by making modifications and I'm going to leave that right at daylight and that is a, a good tone for yeah 5500 that's pretty much daylight right there and so there's all different other settings we can do where we can play around with the hue and saturation of different color schemes to, you know decide so if we want more reds we can pull more red out um, you know and so on and so forth so these are all the different types of things that we do when we make an HDR shot that uh, you can simply experiment with and since this is relatively a non-destructive piece of software not, we're not actually saving all these changes into this and stamping this into a finished product we can play around with this a lot and experiment and and uh, feel free to enjoy as much as you want in the software to where you get the final result so once we've kind of got this done we will then go and uh, we'll do a save as and we'll set this to a JPEG and for right now I will just do this as uh, We'll save this as a truck one sample. And
and I will save it right there. And of course, it'll ask me things about the resolution and whatnot, how I want to save this. And I'm just going to make this pretty uh, quick and painless. And we're going to hit OK. So now what it's going to do is it's going to go render out all these changes that we made in the software and then save it. So what I'll do really quick now is I will pull up that image in Photoshop so we can take a quick look at it. And here is our finished product. So now you're going to be able to see the difference between the baseline shot, which is just a simple photograph, and the HDR tone map shot as far as how the finished product came out. So again, not a lot of work, and again, the more we play with it, the better result we're going to be. But you can definitely tell a dramatic difference between the before and after as far as how the uh, different things that we can do in tone mapping will reflect the uniqueness of an image.